starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone. The product development team is proud to give you an overview about what is new in CI Engineer 19, 18. So all attendees to this webinar are currently muted. If you have any further questions, during the presentation, please feel free to use the question box of the go to, uh, into the GoToWebinar panel, and then we will try to answer to you either during the presentation or at the, uh, at the end session of the presentation. The webinar is also going to be recorded, so feel, you, can, uh, you can access the, the video of the webinar afterwards in the YouTube channel of the engineer. Now, let's start our journey. Let's start our journey of what is new into CI Engineer 18. For further questions, you can really feel free to contact one of us, the product development team, by our email addresses that you can see here on the screen. So, first of all, we are really proud to uh, introduce to you the new splash screen of C Engineer 18, that is the port house of Antwerp, fully calculated with, with C Engineer. C Engineer 18 focuses on streamlined the workflow, advanced material design, and extensive beam links. In each release, we also try to increase the involvement of our users, and you will see the results of that during the presentation. Now. I will give the presenter to my colleague, Ivita, that uh, will present what we do for, for improving the learnability of CI Engineer 18. Hello, can you hear me correctly now? Yes. Okay, and do you see my screen? Yeah, okay. Then today I will talk about uh, learnability in CA Engineer. I will show you a brief presentation and the intention is to show you a few things live in the software. So uh, I will start today with three topics. So first we are going to talk about improved navigation inside CA Engineer, uh, then automating some trivial steps of the design process and then also creating a more helpful user experience and user interface inside the software. So the first topic I will look into is uh, the navigation inside CI Engineer and that's related to the 3D window, the project manager and the CI Engineer tree. Uh, so, related to the project manager, uh, here we did a few improvements in version 18 and the most important thing is that we cleaned up uh, and we organized it better. So now things that belong together are together. You can see, uh, you can access projects from these parts and then also you can directly create an empty project or browse uh, via the Windows browser to find uh, a file that you would like to use. And the next important thing is that we have a brand new learning center. So this is very important for new users. Uh, I will also show it to you. Uh, we, the intention is to create a website where people can access short videos on selected topics. For example, how do I model a 1D member? How do I input loads? Um, and this can be done now via our learning center. And of course, this learning center, the intention is to continue extending it with more video material. Uh, I yeah, some example of the website um, and then directly I move into the next topic and I will show you after uh, that in CI Engineer. 
So we have a brand new NaviCube inside the 3D window. You can see this thing here. What is the intention? Imagine that you would like to look on the top of your structure. Well, now you can do that via the NaviCube. Um, so this is how it looks like. Imagine you just click on the top of this cube, then you can get the top view. If you want to get a view from the left, you do the same, from the right, the same. I will show it, but let me first give you the last topic of navigation, and that is we have a new tree in CI Engineer. This is the old tree here with the buttons. What we did is imp we improved it with, uh, let's say, a more modern kind of code, plus uh, the ability to uh, easily uh, move from one set of uh, one service. We call these things services from one service to the other. So I will move into CI Engineer. Here is my project that I would use for the presentation of these three topics. The first thing is the project manager. So there were many things that were old there. We had some old templates. Now we updated uh, this and also you will find the structure much improved. So from here you can directly create a, a new project. Uh, but the most important thing is the learning center. So I click here and my browser, the browser on the other window, will take you to our to our uh, C Engineer Learning Center. So you start with downloads, the basics, input of 1D members, 2D members. I think this is very useful for uh, your colleagues who are now starting with C Engineer. I think, yeah, is there a problem? You, you, the audio. Um, what should I check? You don't hear me anymore. Oh, it's okay. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so uh, your colleagues who are now starting with C Engineer can use uh, tutorials and short videos, usually five uh, five minutes long. Uh, here in this case, you have a, a brand new tutorial on steel structures and so on. So don't forget the Learning Center, quite a nice improvement of this version. The next thing is the NaviCube. Here is the NaviCube. I will maybe make it bigger, so just for the purpose of the presentation. So you see many shortcuts in itself, but the first important thing that it can do, I can just grab it with the mouse and I can rotate the structure. Yeah, so maybe I will switch to uh, axonometric view and then you will see it better like this. Uh, I can also zoom on the cube with control and right mouse button, so this is the zoom. And then, of course, there are the shortcuts. Let's say I would like to look from the left. I see this. I grab it. I go back from the uh, from the right. Then also from the top. A nice feature when you're looking from the top or bottom are these arrows, which let you rotate 90 degrees, like this. Um, also, if you would like to, let's say we zoom with the cube, and you would like to zoom the structure, you put it well into the screen, you use this button. So as an example, maybe like this. If you would like to zoom to some selected elements, you can do with the same, the same thing with the same button. So in this case, it will zoom to the selected entities. If you would like to switch to perspective mode, the button is here. So you can see the if you want to make nicer images of the project. And one thing that I find very useful is the history. So now a big extension to the view navigation in C Engineer is that we actually store your viewing history. So you can see all the steps that we went through. So I can show you here how we rotate it and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I can go like this to the first view of this project. So this was the NaviCube. And the last thing I wanted to show is the tree. So here is a tree. Uh, now imagine that uh, I would like to go into structure. I go directly from here. I don't need to use any buttons here anymore. So what I can do, I can use the X here to close. Or if I would, uh, for example, be in load, and there I can, for example, go here again and then look at my load cases, look at my combinations. Uh, and then when I go to result service, the load service will close and the result service will be opened. So that was, these were the first three improvements of the, I call it the topic of navigation. Now I will switch back to the PowerPoint and the next thing 
that I would like to share with you is the automatic functionalities. So you know that when you use C Engineer for some advanced or maybe uh, that used to be advanced features, you need to first activate them in order to see them in the graphical user interface. So what we did here is we restructured it. So um, one thing, I can give you examples. Um, initial stress, this one, for example, is always uh, on and hidden because it doesn't burden really the user interface. You see all of these connections are now merged into a single connection item. Um, also, what we did is we changed naming where we thought that it's actually misleading. So we improved the naming, we removed obsolete features, and as a result, you can see that the list is much shorter. And in addition, for new projects, we activate some of these functionalities by default. So the hope is that you would need to go uh, less often to this menu to change things. Uh, that's about the functionality list. Another thing we have, which is also automatic, is the automatic cross-sections. Imagine that you go and you activate a few materials, uh, concrete, steel, uh, aluminium, timber. What happens now is that for each material that you activate, one section gets created. And the intention is that you can, of course, come back and change it, uh, but for simple projects, uh, it's nice to have some default value to start with and I will show you how it can be useful. The next thing is that self-weight, the load case of self-weight now gets generated automatically. So for example, imagine that you modeled some small structure and you want to see that, you, that it's all standing, it fits together and it's not going to give you any singularities. All well, the self-weight load case is there so you can directly run analysis. Another thing is we have automatic code combinations. Uh, these are activated by default. You can, of course, deactivate them, but the intention is now that C Engineer will generate and also manage in the background code-based combinations according to these four codes. So if you are in the environment of Eurocode, uh, code combinations will be generated. Uh, here is an example. In this project, I have a ULS uh, set B combination, a characteristic and quasi-permanent SLS combination. Um, also, if you have masses in your project, you will also get seismic combinations generated and managed in the background. For the ones of you who follow the support survey results, this was number four from the um, survey. So uh, people voted on different possible improvements in C Engineer, and this was number four. Talking about number three was having nonlinear combinations based on the code rules. So this we also did. So what uh, you, you can do now is you can select any code-based combination, be it an automatic one or uh, um, one that you create yourself, and you can create nonlinear combinations, this, uh, so a number of combinations based on the rules of the code. And this I will show. Also, some important thing is to remember is you will be able to also manage the number of generated combinations. But I will show that in more detail inside CI Engineer. So for this, I will use an empty project. And then I will show you the functionalities. Uh, so here, let's, let's uh, activate a number of materials. So I'm going to, uh, to activate timber and aluminium, steel and concrete. And if we go to the functionality list, you will see it is much shorter now. Uh, some things are activated by default. And also, for example, if you look at the steel group, that was one really large group in the past. Uh, it's now much shorter. So I hope this is clear about the functionalities. And then I will show you the automated self-weight. Uh, in order to show it, I will use table input. So let's go here to loads and activate load case. And you see it's already there. I don't show it through the menu because either way in version uh, 17, it would generate itself if you go to the menu. So I show it here. Um, so let's go to structure and model one, 1D member. And here 
you see I already I have a default cross-section. So you see this is a concrete cross-section, a steel one, a timber and aluminium. So I can just go and model one beam and let's just support it like this and I can run the calculation. So self-weight is there, so there's nothing preventing me from running the calculation like this. Then I will show you the combinations. So here I have combinations. Automatically, I have the following ones generated with one load case inside them. If I go to load cases and I will create more of them, maybe I will add a variable one. Here, load group gets, uh, got created and so on and so on. I can uh, create here maybe more load groups and put this into roof maybe. So I have a bunch of load cases. I close here, I go to combinations and you can see that these load cases are now added in the combinations. Um, I would like to maybe show you the nonlinear combinations on a larger project which is already calculated so that I can show you all the possibilities with nonlinear combinations. So here I already have some nonlinear combinations. I will delete this because I want to show you how to make new ones from scratch. So instead of the old new button, I use this new from combination. And here I select the type of combination is envelope. And here, uh, this is a composite structure, so the automatic combination are for construction stage and final stage. So I will grab this one because I know that I will have lots of possible combinations there. And so as a first uh, like uh, estimation, I will get 170 combinations. Uh, then here it's warning me, it's maybe going to take a long time to generate these combinations. Let's have a look. So what SIA will now do is calculate all of the nonlinear combinations and also remove the duplicates. So in this case, we ended up with 136 combinations. You can see there are different possibilities. And in this case, you are not going to get any duplicates. Now I will delete these ones. And I will show you one other option, which I find very useful. So here, if we go back to the same combination and we see the 170 initial estimate, I can also choose to generate only the dangerous combinations. What is a dangerous combination? A dangerous combination is a one that creates in some member in the structure uh, an extreme effect. And that extreme effect can be an internal force or um, stresses in the extreme fibers of the section. So let's say the, the four corners of the sections, if a combination generates their maximum stress, uh, it will be added to the dangerous combinations. And I will check it now. So what, what will happen now is linear results will be used in order to estimate which uh, members are getting extreme effects. So now, we will see what we get in this case 46 combinations there also there is another option which will let you choose to just generate for example the 10 most dangerous ones but of course it's always the safest to use this one if you just want to run some quick analysis and have only three combinations you can do that also so that was the nonlinear combinations and now i am back to my powerpoint uh, so then the different coloring of point line and surface loads was number one in our survey so now it's possible in C engineer to show loads in different colors what you see here is these are the point loads this is a surface load and these are actually four um, four line loads i drew them like this just to confuse you of course um, but these are from the color i can tell that they are line loads you can also see it here and here and then the next big improvement we have, this was actually number two in the survey, um, was the improvements of system lens and, uh, wait, sorry, I see I've added the slide in Dutch. I think that was uh, some mistake. Um, so I have, um, we have a brand new buckling settings, which are using the old graphical input of system lens, but we have some improvements there. So what you see here is all the members that have the same setting are shown together 
and also uh, we removed in, in the past we had many dialogues to input buckling settings in C engineer and that was very confusing for users and because of that we did our best to reduce uh, the number of dialogues so previously we had five dialogues now we have one and also you have immediate access to results which in this case are buckling factors and buckling lengths and you can input the data both graphically and tabular in a tabular form what still remains with the buckling settings is that you are able to use uh, steel setup uh, concrete setup timber setup etc to define the defaults and what you also have is the library of all the buckling settings where you can edit some uh, options at once. So practically, we have uh, three places where you can access buckling settings. And I will show you now this in SIA Engineer. So maybe I can grab this model. And I will show you the logic of how it works. So imagine that I would like to select all columns. So maybe I'll just turn off activity. It's here, there's some activity on. I will work with all of the columns. And let's say I will use activity to, to see them better. Um, here, there's the possibility to see like this. And now it's possible to see which members are compatible, which members are in one line and they have the same number of parts. So in this case, I select these members. And here I can select, for example, the members that I want to have the same buckling setting. So here I see this member is, is braced. So maybe I would like to add them to another buckling setting. And this one maybe also uh, here. And now here I can select all of these members again like this or I just simply select with the mouse and what I will do is I will go to the buckling settings dialog and now this new buckling settings will be assigned to all of these members and what I see here is a separate graphical window where I can manage these settings so like this um, we show uh, some, uh, let's say, graphical input possibilities only on one member to not make a complete mess inside this window. But I will show you here the active constraints. So it's possible to use this table like this to uh, edit these buckling constraints, or you can simply use these supports like this. And you see the span is changing. Um, what you see here is an indicator which tells you whether this beam is uh, uh, displaceable, so braced or not braced, or sway or non-sway. So sway settings can also be defined graphically. So I will uh, show you now the link to results. If you go here, and maybe I will activate the names of the members, and I choose one random member here. So let me update here the... Uh, the table and here I have B1799 I'm showing this on a quite a big project to show you that it's possible to work with such uh, such big projects in this case it's this last one uh, so what you see here is the system length so I mean, maybe zoom in if it's not very visible the system length in y, y direction the system length in uh, z direction and also the buckling factors now if i make some changes here if i for example uh, will activate this so now the span will change and maybe i will switch this one to sway um, if i go here and i update i need to update the results every time so here you see the system length changed and also this buckling factor because now we are talking about a sway displaceable kind of uh, structure it was calculated to be much higher if i also would say well i don't want a calculated buckling factor i would like to just input a buckling factor in this case the default is one i can also immediately go here and then look at this member and then you will see this factor is one so that's yes so um, yes that's that was about buckling and I will hand over the presentation to my colleague Marwan who will present to you some things about concrete thank you very much uh,
Hello everyone, my name is Marwan. I'm the responsible product manager for the development of the concrete design in C engineer. Uh, today I'm going with, with uh, will be with you and uh, before showing you the content of the version 18 from C engineer, let's little bit remember the content from version 17. Uh, I hope uh, you still remember that in version 17 we released the new solution for the design of 2D concrete, designing of AS basic and then C engineer calculate the additional amount of reinforcement. Um, also in version 17 we released the design of punching reinforcement. In fact it was the first release about punching and also in version 17 we released the calculation of the cracks for slabs and for walls as well and also we had the first release uh, the automatic solution for the CDD calculation or how we call it codependent deflection. Today in order to explain the content for version 18 it will be great if I will divide it by four groups I think it will be a little bit more clear to you. Uh, the first part it's about general improvement regarding the punching shear design as I explained the first release was in version 17 and now this is the second release regarding the punching. The second topic in the concrete improvement it's about the new solution regarding the design of the steel fiber concrete in C engineer. The third part it's a kind of good news to our clients in Swiss, Switzerland because now they can use our concrete solution to design beams, columns, uh, slabs as well supported by also the CDD calculation and the last part it's a kind of general improvement to uh, make the solution from C engineer easy to use uh, for the concrete designer. So let's uh, go to the first part. With the first part the general improvement in punching it's uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to show you in fact two images. The first one, it's a kind of explanation for the issue from version 17. What's the problem in version 17? And then I will explain to you the second image where you have the new solution in version 18. So regarding punching, what we have, um, the first thing, as you can see from this screen, you have a slab and inside this slab you have four openings. The problem in version 17, the openings are not considered for the calculation of the critical parameter. Now with the new solution, as you can see from the screen, the reduction is already done automatically by the software. So what you need to do as a user, you need to model your openings inside your slab and then the rest is up to CI engineer to calculate the reduction. There is something very nice to mention today for you. It's the presentation of the result. As you can see that SIA present, uh, in fact, the critical parameter on screen. The idea from making this kind of a presentation is to help you understand how does SIA engineer calculate the reduction here. Just need you need to draw a straight line from the center of the column to the edge and then you will discover how does SIA made the reduction. And this is exactly how it's mentioned by the Eurocode. And I'm sure you are aware about this image from the Eurocode. Uh, second improvement in punching, it's regarding the calculation of the shear reinforcement itself, the punching reinforcement. Unfortunately, in version 17, the calculated reinforcement, uh, it was calculated within the first critical parameter. Now with the new solution, uh, SIA will check all the possibilities automatically and if the reinforcement is required beyond the critical parameter then SIA will do the necessary for that. Uh, the third improvement I would like to mention it's a kind of improving the quality of our result in, from CI engineer. The issue you have it here in this screen you have a plate and a, uh, you have a beam passing on the edge of that plate. As you can see from the result, you have a unity check equal to three, which is a kind of um, general unity check in concrete where you have uh, the check is not done. And definitely when you have um, a beam, then you don't need to check punching and at least it's not supported by our software. But the problem with, the, with, the, with version 17, SIA taking all the notes into account when we calculate the punching in version 17 without making any filter. So we decided in the new version, in the version 18, to apply a kind of smart filter 
only the valid nodes will be selected for the calculation of punching and the rest it will be ignored. The consequence of this new improvement it also will be on the table output. This table from version 17 and as you can see you have many empty cells with this NA not applicable to tell you that this node it's belong to that beam and we don't need to do bunching. So we, de we decided to fix all of that and now we have a new summary table. Uh, the summary table you can call it as the conclusion of the bunching design. If the slab resistance is enough it will be indicated here. If the slab needs some bunching re reinforcement then it will be also indicated here. Finally, what we're talking about today in punching, we're talking about um, automatic solution to check punching for slab and foundation. Any recognition for the shape of the column, the location of the column, it will be automatically by the software. You have two possibilities to change the beta factor. Uh, also, there is something nice to mention in this release regarding the longitudinal reinforcement inside the slab. In version 17, it was supported two types of reinforcement, how we call it in C Engineer, AS required and AS provided. But now with the new version, if you would like to define some practical reinforcement inside your slab, then this reinforcement can also be selected for the design of punching shear reinforcement. Um, that's it for uh, for the improvement in punching and now I can move on with the second part of this uh, webinar which is uh, regarding the new solution for the steel fiber concrete. Uh, quickly I would like to mention that uh, we will have um, a webinar dedicated just for this topic where we can talk more about the details. What I would like to mention today is um, you can use the software, you can use C Engineer version 18 to design uh, or to analyze any uh, concrete structure made with the steel fiber concrete. You will see that we have a new library, you can calculate the internal forces and SIA offering you a nice tool to calculate the required kilograms of steel fibers inside your slab or floor. Also the solution Solution. It's supported by ULS and SLS checks and you can use the new methodology or technology from CA Engineer regarding the, uh, the physical nonlinearity which can be used for uh, fiber reinforced concrete or even for a normal concrete, standard concrete. Third part, as I explained to you, uh, it's kind of good news to our clients to, um, in Switzerland, they can use our concrete solution. I will skip this part at uh, this moment because the content is exactly the same as it is in the Eurocode, only the difference is the support of the SIA code. Um, the last improvement, it's uh, the general one uh, regarding the design of 1D and 2D. Um, I will assume that uh, many of you are already familiar with um, this kind of reinforcement or how we call it welded wire mesh. It's a kind of a prefabricated reinforcement. The designer can order it from the market and he can use it in the design itself. This kind of reinforcement was already supported since long time uh, in CIA engineer, but unfortunately it was supported only for our clients in the Netherlands. So we decided a little bit extend this library by supporting more countries like Belgium, France, UK, Denmark, Sweden, etc. The idea from this uh, extension for this library, now uh, as a user I can pick uh, the name of the welded wire mesh and then I can tell SIA engineer I'm going to put this reinforcement as a basic reinforcement and in that case I will save the time because I don't need to define the diameter of the reinforcement or the spacing between the bars. SIA will understand that directly by the definition of the name and also I, I will assume that I will save a lot of minutes uh, because finally when I design something in SIA engineer I need to communicate that with my draftman and in this case if I will send the name to the draftman he will understand about what I'm talking. <clears throat> Uh, the next improvement also it's general, it's about the design or about the new method uh, that we release in version 17 for 1D and for 2D. The principle is like that, you define, <coughs> sorry, the principle you define some basic amount of reinforcement inside your structure and then SIA 
engineer will calculate the additional one. And then this, uh, the basic plus additional, we call it in C engineer, AS provided. So sometimes in C engineer, when I go to AS provided, I calculate the provided reinforcement, I see there is no result. And this is basically uh, okay, there is no result because you, because I didn't make any definition in the template itself. We have a template, but the user always need to make a some definition here. So we decided to little bit improve this workflow by making the definition by ourselves. So in version 18, after clicking on analysis, after analyze your structure, you can go to the concrete menu and immediately click on AS provided without any definition because the definition done automatically by the software. But of course, you can change that anytime. Uh, also, a uh, nice improvement to our client uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, we have uh, a control check. It's regard regarding the stress limitation. The issue with this uh, control check uh, in version 17, always we are checking the check uh, in the concrete and in the reinforcement in the same time. The idea, because we are using the general workflow from the Eurocode regarding this check. But if you read the non-national annex, then you will understand that the check is not required in the reinforcement. It's only required for the concrete. So we decided to solve this issue in version 18. And as you can see, now we decided to skip this check for the uh, for the concrete, sorry, for the reinforcement, and uh, now the check it's depending fully on the concrete part only, as it is mentioned in the national annex. And the next improvement is about the legend that we have it for the design of 2D member. <clears throat> um, uh, this is the, in fact, as you can see, this is the value of AS provided. As I explained to you, AS provided, it's basically coming from two values one value to represent the basic amount, which is 524 here, and the second one, additional value, in my case here, the red color. But unfortunately, as you can see, this is in version 17, always we are representing the result as a 16 color, which is kind of not uh, unlogical result here. So we decided to little bit improve this one by doing two things. First of all, we are showing you only the valid colors. And the second issue, we are showing you, in fact, the uh, conversion of the bar. And now your um, communication will be much faster. Last thing I would like uh, to mention about this error message, which is I fully dislike because in some cases when I have a multi-story building I would like to do the concrete design I'm getting this annoying uh, error message so finally we solved this issue the stability is much better um, and as you can see for this multi-story building I did the design for 1D uh, in four minutes and for 2D elements slabs and walls two uh, minutes so I'm expecting the stability is much, uh, much better. So uh, finally, as a conclusion, we did general improvement regarding the punching to improve our solution in punching. Also, we have a new solution to design fiber reinforced concrete structure. Um, um, good improvement regarding the stability and uh, to make the workflow of 1D and 2D design much faster compared with the past. So I will give it back to Iveta now again. Yeah, Iveta, you can switch and unmute yourself. And now? Yes. Okay. So I hope everybody can see my screen. I think so. Okay, so I will quickly go through the composite floors in version 18. Keep in mind that there will be a detailed uh, webinar on composite floors on the 3rd of July. So anybody who's interested in this topic can 
follow this webinar. I just have 10 minutes to show you what we have for composites. First, I would tell you that it's important to keep in mind what is the scope of this development. So we are talking about uh, I-beam, like an I-section, symmetrical, which is supporting steel sheeting. You also have headed studs and a layer of concrete with a mesh. So this is the composite system that we had in, have in mind at the moment. We also have this uh, design and optimization of this kind of structures integrated in the 3D uh, analysis and design environment of CI Engineer. And also this functionality is now possible to combine with advanced analysis features like stability analysis and nonlinear analysis. Um, the main deliverables of the version 18 to keep in mind is that we now have stud design, so we are able to design the number of studs on the beam and lay out them, so we give you two different layouts, uniform and segmented. We also offer a comprehensive optimization, so an optimization that takes into account all of the uh, limit states and uh, all of the failure modes, ultimate limit states, the serviceability limit states, also openings inside the web, plus detailing, and this for the two stages, so we're talking construction stage and final stage, which are automatically taken into account for composite structures. We also have better check behavior, that uh, we have much faster checks and the output is much better. You can also uh, export the design to Revit, so the design, that's the cross-section number of studs and uh, the possibly pre-cambering of beams, and also now it's possible to do non-linear and stability analysis for composite floors. And here, last time I checked, it was quite fast, 408 beams in less than a minute for all of the limit states and detailing conditions. Uh, a look in the past, what did we re uh, release for composite in previous versions? I just want to remind you this. We have the tributary areas for the uh, gravity uh, loads. So you can see here a more complicated structure where tributary areas are generated for each beam. We also have automatic handling of the fresh uh, concrete weight during the construction stage. We also have an automated staged analysis. So on the level of loads, analysis and checks, stages are handled in the background and you don't need the construction stages module. We also released floor diaphragms so you can model rigid and flexible diaphragms in C Engineer. And we also have previously the checks and in this version also optimization for composite floors. So I go directly in CI Engineer, I show you a structure here, so what you can see what is special about this structure, if you look at the 2D elements here, you will see composite decks. So the element type is composite deck with a rigid diaphragm using also tributary areas to distribute the load. You can see here the tributary areas of, for this beam, for example. Um, if you have composite structure of this type, you are also going to get composite combinations based on the load cases which carry a property which is the stage. So for example, the self-weight of the structure that's construction stage and then permanent uh, loads in long term and variable loads in short term. So this is something that already existed, but what is new now? So if we go to the composite service, I have here uh, prepared already a selection for one floor. Two things that I find very important that uh, are working together with the composite module very well. One thing is the result lock. So when you use the result locking, it's, uh, this is not just for composites, it works for all functionalities in C Engineer. If you lock the results, you can change cross sections and materials and so on without losing your results. Uh, the other thing I find very useful is the table results, which I also will be using. And then I show you now, I. Um, I have the composite set up. I don't have time to go into the details here, but here are some options related to the optimization. So I select to do optimization design instead of check. And then I have an option whether to try to minimize the beam, try to minimize the number of studs or try to go somewhere in between. So if I run now for all of these beams uh, without filters uh, for uh, all members with, uh, for the extreme, and here I need to use a composite class. 
why do I need to use a composite class? Because I need all of the ULS and SLS combinations in the two different stages, so final stage and construction stage. Uh, when I run now the checks, it doesn't just run the checks, but it also looks for possible improvements. So if we see now some of these beams are failing, um, what I can do directly is I can go to the optimization, which is located here. But of course, I can also work with groups of members, which is often very useful in the optimization because finding one solution for all beams at the same time may be tricky in some cases. So what we see here is that some of the beams are passing. What I can do is I can select the beams that look to have more or less the same problem. So like this. So now I have run the uh, checks for these beams. What I can do from here is double click and that takes me directly to the standard output for uh, one of the beams. So in this case, I have here the standard output is input data plus the outcome of all the checks. In this case, I have construction stage, final stage, and also the detailing condition. And in this case, I can see that there is just too many studs on this beam. Um, I can show you maybe the detailed output a little bit later, um, but to not waste time, I'm just going to select all these beams. Or I think this will, or actually I can just go here and say, um, I think it would, it should, wait, I'm not sure whether it will take all the beams, so I'm just, just in case going to select them like this. like this, they are selected. I can refresh just in case. I apply the design proposal and what does it tell me? Uh, it's going to change the cross-section to a cro smaller cross-section and it will increase the composite action. Okay, it sounds good. It gives me the option to modify all beams that share this cross-section, so modify the unselected members. If I untick it, it will create me a new section. So I, um, apply this proposal and then I can see if the if it was successful uh, so I will rerun for the for these beams and I can see that the optimization was more or less okay but some of the beams still have some issues sometimes it's needed to run it twice let's try so I would do it only for these ones and then okay so I see that in this case maybe I don't want to uh, to use such a big beam so and in this case let's see what happened okay so now it's okay so let's look at the detailed output because that's something that's also very interesting to show so here we have the input data and then every formula that we are using we are printing it in the detailed output so construction stage um, and so on. So I don't know if I have enough time to show you this, but let's go to something more complicated, like for example, the derivation of moment resistance. It's, this is how it looks. And in the end, you can always find the stat layout. And one last thing that I would like to show you is instead of maybe showing here the unity check, I can also show the segmented start layout so here what it's doing is going to show me uh, the labels on the beams so these labels contain the cross section the number of studs and the so here let me hide the the warnings what what it's showing me here is like this and maybe with this one, it's showing me the, the, the current design situation. So the cross section, the number of studs, and if it was, it was needed, also the camber on the beam. In this particular case, I didn't have any calculated camber, so we don't see it, but normally we should also be able to see this. So if you look here, it says that in this continuous, in this beam here, you need 13, 13, 13, and 12. So I think I'm running out of time, and because of that, I'm going to switch the presenter to my colleague, Patricia.
So now we go to the last part of the presentation about CI engineer V18. The next section is about add-ons and glass design. So mainly for our uh, German speaking users, because of the national annex is supported by our partner Freelo, we introduced a link to the Freelo Foundation modules into the engineer dating. So actually, how does it work? It's a kind of 1D, uh, one way direction that uh, enable you as a user to send your data, your internal forces to C from C engineer to Freelo. So actually it's following the same approach as the development we did last year for IDEA connections. So if a client has installed a Freelo product on the machine, you can really see on the, on the, into the service, the main tree of C engineer under Geotechnics, the service related to Freelo. Now, this is mainly for our uh, German speaking areas and and is really due to the fact that uh, the DIN, so the national annex supported, is the German one. Then we have the in CN engineer one, we introduced the glass design module. Actually, this is due to a development that we did internally to make easier to, to add into C engineer development based on CIA design firms from third parties companies. So the CIA last module actually has been developed by one of our partners, Alplan, Al, Albim. So if you want, you can contact directly the person from the contact that you see here on the screen. And how does it work? So basically, when if you buy the module, we get the glass design. What is supported? First of all, you are using a FEM, so, FEM software. With the, what does it mean? It means that you will have an accurate result while looking at the 2D member defined as less material. Moreover, you have a very wide library of glass system, as you can see here on the screen, and is also everything according with the design code. There is no yet Euro code, but the code that we are used to make the design of the glass is based on the PR and the German code, and both of them are the fundament of the future glass Euro code. Next session is about BIM, so building information modeling. C engineer is really well known on market because of um, we have 10 years experience in BIM and API, and we work on uh, improving constant uh, to improving continuously the, our current solution and extend our current uh, poss possibilities. And in C engineer 18, we work on improving our link with Tecla and with Revit. When we talk about Tecla. We worked on a bidirectional link so that now you can interchange data between C engineer and Tecla. This is every, everything is based on a new technology, based on the new Tecla API. You can export the end reactions in Dental Forces, Curve Bibs, and Polylines. More information about that is going also to be given by an, ex, an extra webinar that we're going to give uh, in the next coming months. Related to Revit link, we implemented the, the possibility to export reinforcement of beam and plates from C engineer to Tecla. On top of that, we also work on other small improvements, mainly due to fixed issues that we had with the mapping, uh, mainly due to the fact that uh, to the export of a partial enterprise download and to define like the, in the export of number of spaces and the um, export concentrated loads as well to Revit from C engineer. We know that as a structure engineer, you will spend most of the most of your time analyzing the, the results of uh, of the model that you created into C engineer. So that's why in every like in C engineer 17, we introduced an op, a new post processing environment that is actually meant that you can activate from the project data that is actually meant to enable and to improve the a technology that we are using internally. So actually provide fast development for our company. And also it's easier to maintain whenever we come up with the uh, bugs or extra development to be added. Benefit for the user is actually makes faster open operation for the end users. So you can it's, uh, speed up our workflow and speed up also the computational time as well. So that's the post-processing environment B17. Linked to that, that, so thanks to the new post-processing environment, we are able to introduce the 64-bit version, which actually is mainly due to solved memory efficiency. So no crashes due to memory, and is based on the post-processing environment mainly 17. 
So what does it mean is mean that uh, we know that the post-processing environment 17 has still some um, um, limitations, but it cover, it cover almost the full workflow for steel and concrete structures, supports for linear, non-linear seismic analysis, and is also suitable for um, every large structure you want to use that actually in the past would do, would uh, provide, would, uh, create crashes due to memory issues. And the, all the information about limitations and unsupported features are accessible from the website, from the help of C engineer. Very important to mention is that there is full compatibility between the 32 bit and the 64 bit. So can, you can easily open a project with 64 bit. If you see that the function ID is not supported, you can just close, save it, and go back to the 32 bit. There is a full compatibility between the two versions. Now we go with actually what is new uh, while talking about uh, results in the uh, in C engineer. So here you can see we worked on the integration steps, ex export of XML, wireframe, reaction improvements, adjustable links for the 1D unity check, analysis for non-linear functions, and 3D color for the 1D member checks. So the firm, we know that the first thing you are going to do when running a calculation with C engineer, you are going to the results and you would like to check your deformations. When you have a big structure, asking for 3D deformations can take quite a lot of time. So we worked and we introduced a function called, called wireframe, which actually enabled you to quickly, easily have a look of the displacement of your structure. So as you can see, compared to the previous 3D displacement, we reduced from 34 minutes to only 10 seconds. So if you have a big structure and you used to end up with issues in the computational time, that's very easy to visualize all your displacements on big models in a short time. Results. We, uh, that's actually based on user requests while discussing with support after the release 17. We know that users were asking to visualize on the screen the combination names for one day result. So there, as you can see on the screen, into the property settings, you can really activate uh, display combinations. And then you will see on the screen only the combinations name without all the, um, uh, the com only without the combination key that actually was covering a lot of space on the screen. Integration strips. So we had integration strips, strips, uh, strips in the past. Now what we work on is to extend the functionality to make it workable for multiple slabs. So in case you have multiple slabs, you can easily add in, create one integration integration slips that cover the full slabs, and you can still access the results for these integration slips. Moreover, very important to say even here is that uh, it works also if you have slabs. Uh, with different uh, thickness. So if you have two slabs next to each other, different thickness, you can use the integration slips and results will be probably, pro uh, probably uh, shown on the screen. That's a feature related to the 1D unity check. It works for um, concrete and steel, and it's very useful because sometimes we want to control what is shown on the screen, and we want to focus only on what we think is critical. So again, based on user feedback, we enable the possibility to define set limit values for the results. So you have an upper limit and an over limit. So what you can do, you can say, okay, I want to visualize results colored only for a set of value, which actually enable you to focus really on what you want and to focus on critical results of your structure. That's um, purely for the post-processing environment uh, B17. Uh, that's again based on user feedback. So it was not possible in the post-processing environment 17 to export results to XML. And we know that there are a lot of users using XML, so we enable this functionality. And also, it's very useful whenever you want to uh, send results to Tegla Structure and Revit Link via XML. Now the functionality is available um, to all of you. That's again kind of more uh, migration function that was not supported in the new post processing environment. So that's now you also you have, uh, and that's actually was very important development to make sure that scaffolders or still um, users could move to the new post processing environment and if needed to use the um, the 64 bit version of C engineer that actually is ingest for nonlinear functions. So that's, as I said, is really provide you now a complete workflow for rank designers and scaffolding buildings, uh, builders, and it's applicable for both support ingest and coupling. 
that was over all about what's new in the engineer 18 and um, related to results as i mentioned we worked on post-processing environment 17 so now it's suitable for most of the daily tasks so please move uh, to this post-processing environment new results are fully functionally and improved compared to the previous version of CIA. and uh, from the website you have access to the 64-bit version that is really usable for large buildings, scaffolding, and seismic calculation. Uh, just one remark, it solves issues only for the, uh, when you end up in the computational uh, memory issues. So that's, um, we covered all the topics of what has been developed in C Engineer 18. Uh, I think, so we have the streamlined workflow, advanced material design, an extensive, extensive BIM workflow. And as you have seen and listened from all of our, everything is based on user feedback. Now we go and we check if there are questions that has, have not been answered yet. While going to the questions, I see that everything has been answered. There are no further questions. So we thank you again. Okay, if you have, Further questions, please feel free to type that in the question box that you find on the GoToWebinar panel. So we will wait a few minutes uh, before closing the webinar. Maybe also worthy to mention is that uh, the webinar will soon be uploaded online. So if you would like to share it with your colleagues, uh, the recording, I mean, uh, you can you can do that. And also, of course, any feedback that you would like to provide us uh, is also welcome. Um, maybe if you could show the email addresses again, Patricia, on the current, on the developments that you saw today. I think um, we're always willing to, to get more feedback. Ah, yeah, I see it, yes. Can you do composite design for lightweight concrete? Um, yes, we can, but you need to input the lightweight concrete yourself. At the moment, we see a bit of a problem that we do not support lightweight concrete in concrete in our concrete functionality and for safety measures because of this, we don't have a library for lightweight concrete, but if you input the lightweight concrete properties, you can do uh, it's supported to do it um, in the composite module. Then the next question, can you let me know how you did deal with concrete long-term effects in terms of analyzing the deflection of slabs, for example? I think that's for you, Marwan. Maybe unmute. Yeah, um, uh, can you hear my voice? Okay, I, the question is, can you, um, um, the question is a little bit about how we calculate the long-term deflection for the slabs. In fact, the, the idea is very simple. Uh, the calculation of the deflection, it's done by two steps. The first step, it's calculating the internal forces for that entire slab or your project. And then we, from the internal forces, we will calculate the stiffnesses. So it could be, uh, the stiffness will be reduced due to the cracks. Then we will send those stiffnesses to the solver one more time to calculate the real deflection. So it's 2D or two steps of, of calculation of the, um, uh, of the deflection, the first one by calculating the real stiffness, and then the second one, it's by calculating the deflection itself. Um, if you need more info about the way how we calculate the deflection, then it's already, um, you can find already a lot of information online by visiting our website. There is there is some technical articles about this one, and also you can use the online help to understand how we do all of that.
Um, another question is about the bunching and someone asking, uh, he would like to understand what exactly the diameter that we use for the reinforcement by showing a kind of table. I think this is the question. Today we are showing the ratio uh, of the reinforcement instead of the diameter and uh, the spacing between the bars. Um, uh, we thought showing the ratio quite simple because it's just kind of converting of uh, the area by the cross section. But I see some other um, clients also pushing us to have this um, request. So I hope to solve it as soon as possible, not only for punching, but also for CDD calculation, because it could be the same question, what exactly the amount of reinforcement that we use from the slab for the calculation of punching or for ca calculation of CDD. So when we will do it, I, I will not say when, because I'm not sure, but I hope that we will see it as soon as possible. Okay, um, if there are no other questions, so I suggest that we maybe end the session for today. Um, then we'll be the, on Thursday, we will have the Dutch speaking and French speaking webinars. And I think tomorrow is a Czech speaking webinar. Um, then also a few webinars will follow on the topics of, for example, fire re reinforced, uh, fiber reinforced concrete and uh, composite and also BIM links. This is all on our website if you would like to follow any of these uh, webinars. So I would like to thank you all for the participation and also for the questions and feel free to contact us with any comments that you have or questions after the webinar. Thank you.